Okay, let's get started, shall we? Welcome to Home Studio Quickies, the show that answers a question that's either recent or relevant and will hopefully be helpful in the answering of said question. And or asks, does Audition have the same processing power as other standard DAWs? I use Audition, but lately I'm seeing it may have some limitations in terms of exporting the final mix. I'm not sure if it handles mixes as well as DAWs like Pro Tools and Logic. What's your take? Well, and or, my take, Audition, Adobe Audition, is the best audio-centric DAW, hands down, period. That's my take on that. Now. I might be a little biased as I've been using Audition for 18 years since it came out in the I'm making myself sound so old right now. But I've been using Audition since version one. And uh, it's good. It has, has, I believe, unparalleled audio restoration tools um, for 60 cycle hum, um, your background noise clicks, pops. Uh, vinyl crackling. I mean, obviously, get everything right at the source if you can, as, as clean a recording as you can. But if you do need to, which I did need to, I had a microphone about the size of my index finger here. Terrible, like, <laughs> it should have been terrible, but with the help of good placement and some audition uh, wizardry, it turned out to be just fine. So that's my take on audition, processing wise. Mixing, as far as mixing, you know, it pretty much has the same um, skills, uh, skill skill set. You have the skill set. It has the same tool set as many other DAWs as the major ones. So, uh, like here, it has, this is the multi-track view, obviously. And we have our mixer and such. Um, as for handling mixes, I would say that depends to a significant degree on your your D, your computer's processing power. And the reason I say that is because DAWs like Audition, Logic, Pro Tools, they're using, unless they have acceleration, like Pro Tools HDX, which takes some of the processing onto the hardware, it's going to be using your computer's processing power to, uh, to create the mix. So if you're using a computer that's, you know, 10 years, well, not 10 years old, let's say about seven years old, you know, dual core processor, eight gigs of RAM, it's, it, it's gonna struggle a little bit, especially if you open up a big session like I have here, or even even bigger session with 50 tracks. Um, so that would be, that would be what I would have to say to that. Now, when you're talking about mixing, and does it handle mixing, mixes as well? If you are talking about, um, the options for saving the files once you've mixed down you you have a, a number of different options that you could do for example it has uh, FLAC and AIFF and WAVE MP3 uh, there's Libsyn there's a bunch here we can we can look at them here monkey audio monkey audio um, ape uh, Libsyn FLAC ZIF Windows Media Foundation Windows Media Audio MPEG and so on and so forth. It does not mm, does not save. There's a format it doesn't. It doesn't look like it saves to AAC, which would be the Apple format. But you have a number of options that you can use to save to. And if if I were going to save, I would have hit save at that point. Other than that, I'm not sure if you're experiencing something wonky in your mix, like uh, I don't know glitches or or stuff that happened during recording or what um, I'm not sure that that I'd have to know your specific case now if if you want to get into MIDI production and all that I'd say audition is not your ticket it doesn't have MIDI input you cannot edit MIDI it does use external or third-party VSTs as far as plugins go like compressors and stuff although it does have its own set of as a multi-band compressor that's really good and a tube model compressor so it, it can use third-party plugins but it doesn't do MIDI very well now does it sound different than Logic or Pro Tools like does it sound worse 
Well, you know, that's that's a bit subjective, on to be honest. I, I've done a few mixes in my time. I've mixed almost exclusively in Audition for about 10 years, I would say. And, and nobody really said, oh, well, obviously you've used an inferior DAW. You know, that's not, that's not Pro Tools mix, or obviously you didn't use Logic. I think that comes down to the song. Mostly what people recognize is good song, bad song. Good, uh, good uh, radio drama, podcast, or bad one. Um, so that would be more with the production. Generally, people can't tell what DAW you've used unless, like I was mentioning earlier, you have some obvious issues with uh, and jitter or hiss, and they wonder if you used a tape recorder. Um, but generally, these are all pretty much the same. Now, at the end of the day, I think if you if you've been using Audition. Um, you, whether you have the single app or if you have the whole bundle, that would be the most efficient. I would not suggest someone beginning necessarily to uh, go on a subscription plan. I think Reaper is a much better bang for the buck. $60 for a uh, not a perpetual license, but it lasts for several versions and there there's quite a gap before you have to pay the $60 again. And uh, 225 for the commercial license. But what I would really say is get clear on mixing, like your your basics, your your volume, your your compression, and your EQ. Get get that all settled. How how you mix in, especially in like the multi-track, like we were looking at earlier, that's going to be basically the same in all DAWs. You're going to have a mixer. You're going to have a volume thing. You're going to have inserts for effects, and you're going to have sends and that. It's all pretty much the same in that way. So you're going to want to get clear on mixing, figure that out, and then figure out what you want. What type of mixing do you like? If you're purely audio and, like I said, you're using Audition already or that's what you chose, you like it, go ahead, use it. I, I, I enjoyed it for many years. Um, if you want to get into MIDI, I'd recommend something like Reaper. Honestly, I'm a big Reaper fan. But if you're on a Mac, you can use Logic, absolutely. Pro Tools, if you're really wanting to get the industry standard that's in every studio in the world, basically, yeah, you can go and pick up Pro Tools. There's a free version, and then there's there's different levels. Um, that's That's if you want to do everything you know that Pro Tools does with massive sessions and Dolby Atmos and I mean the free version doesn't do Atmos um, but if you're trying to start recording at home I would recommend something like Reaper cheaper but yeah I, it depends on, on what you want which one is best um, they're all pretty similar and as long as you get it right at the source and you get your mix clear like I was saying earlier volume EQ compression as needed, um, then you're on the right track. So hopefully this helped answer your question, and uh, I look forward. Look forward, <laughs> forward, forward, and swerve. I don't know what that was. I will look forward to seeing you in another video. All right, take care.